got a question just today about a good friend and former coworker of mine. She was a personal trainer, so she's been doing the right things for all the years. Same that I did right. 10 years ago, I was doing all the right things. So into the blender went the spinach and the almond milk and the beets. Did that right. every single morning for years because that's what you do. So right. the person was talking about her bones, her rheumatoid arthritis, basically. And she's more aware of this kind of stuff now. And she's been working to get some of that stuff out of her diet, but she's experiencing more of those symptoms now. My head went directly to oxalate as probably a primary cause, even though it maybe has been years since that person has eaten high oxalate foods. Is that correct to say or to think that that is probably the primary cause? Are there other plant chemicals? Are there other things going on there? Or is oxalate pretty much the primary problem when it comes to bones, bone issues, joint, joint pain, that kind of thing? I have a clear bias on this because I've encountered too many cases in my client base of people who've got things like this and it turns out to be oxalate. But no, it's not the only bad guy out there. And the reason though that I would be looking at oxalate is that let's say you went through a time period in your 20s where you were a vegan, but at some point you started to feel not so good on vegan and you changed your diet. So then it wasn't as high in oxalate anymore. But the problem is that oxalate can bioaccumulate. There's research to indicate this. There was a, a great piece of research that looked at thyroid glands and researchers discovered over time with reviewing samples of these thyroid glands that they could tell how old somebody was by how many oxalate crystals were in the thyroid gland. And so that's a pretty astonishing thing because we don't think about the thyroid gland as being a location for oxalate vulnerability. Again, we just look at kidneys. And these were not people where it was all about oxalate that they were looking at these thyroid glands either. So I think the problem with bioaccumulation is it then may be taking time for us to get rid of it. And unless our oxalate's dropping low enough so that bioaccumulation really stops so that we're starting to flush it out. We're not just replacing new stuff as we're moving things out. It can take quite a long time for you to get oxalate out if you're just moving some, adding other, moving some, adding other. In the grand scheme of things, you may lose some oxalate really quickly because it's kind of surface level. Let's look at something like, you know, blood cells where you're turning those over constantly. So if you had a lot of oxalate in your bloodstream, you're going to get rid of that quickly because it's sort of surface level. But bones remodel slowly. Bones, they they assume, take about seven years to remodel. Well, you could be well wow. down the way from where your original oxalate intake was happening and be dealing with bone issues because it's just going to take longer for those tissues to be refreshed, if you will, right? So yeah, that's part of the challenge because they I've actually seen in some research which looks at oxalosis. So that's when the body is essentially got so much oxalate in it that you're seeing it everywhere. And you can actually see oxalate crystals in the bone matrix. So it's not like somehow there's a get out of jail free card for some kinds of tissues in the body. And gosh, we don't know enough. We just know the beginnings of some of this. And so more than give definitive answers, I invite people to think about it and consider what could be going on. Especially if we know, and this part we do know, that there are cell transporters that move chloride, that's an electrolyte, that move bicarbonate, lots of tissues in the body use bicarbonate, your pancreas uses bicarbonate, or sulfate, lots of tissues in the body use sulfate, your liver uses sulfate, it's really important there. We just need to kind of be willing to have some curiosity here about what could be happening if oxalate's being moved into all these kinds of tissues, and then what's the implications for getting it out? 